Hotel, hotel, peace to everybody out there. Today's topic is who were the ancient Egyptians and why are they today? This is the host Gayasi Ngozi, better known as Sarah Nefer Mary Amen, and we'll be going into better detail of what happened to them, who are they, and where are they now. And why don't people really know about them? And are we the descendants of ancient Kemet? I would like to break up the monotony of the confusion that people believe that the people of West Africa that we descent from were direct extensions of the people of Kemet. This whole show topic will be breaking up the monotony of who is and what's not. And, um, from the beginning, I will be explaining one of the tribes that our ancestors came from. We know that a lot of Africans in America descend from the Yoruba, which is one tribe of Nigeria. We also come from the Igbo people, which is another tribe of Nigeria, the Togo, the people of Sierra Leone, and also some of us descend from the people of Senegal and Togo, like I just said, and some people were descendants of the people of southern Sudan. <clears throat> I will also be explaining the people of the Congo that we descend from as well, that a lot of people don't talk about for some particular reason. They stay in Egypt because of the Westerner or the European stay in Egypt but they, it's for some reason, they're scared to go back to the core, which is West Africa. So we'll begin into better te- detail of did the Camises know the West Africans? Were these people one and the same? Or did they extend from the same from the same place? And the truth of the matter is, yes, people of West Africa and the people of ancient Kemet, or what they refer to as Kemet, came from the same place. What people refer to as Ethiopia, which is not the original name. Tanetter or the land of the divine could have been one of the original names. Not even Abyssinia is the original name because these are all titles that was given to us from foreigners. Even the word Africa. Some people like to say, talk about a tribe called Afrikanu, which is non cipher due to um, New Age thinkers who, you know, keep try to keep the self esteem alive about using this word Africa. But Scipio Africanus did colonize North Africa. The people that lived in Nigeria at that time before it was called Nigeria did not refer to that continent as being Africa. Just because two tribes looked at it as being Africa, the rest of the continent didn't look at it like that. Um, These people had different systems, different programs, different civilizations, and they all lived off a bottle system dealing with trade. That was it. The people of Kemet did not refer to themselves as being Kemetian. These people were the Raish people, which refers to Ragish, which means the descendants of Ra, radiant light from Tamari, which means beloved land. Just like the word Nubian is not an actual word for the people that they refer to that live in Sudan. Nubian or Nub means gold. So we have to learn, you know, the science and linguistics of what is and what's not. Um, I hear a lot of people give reference <clears throat> to Wallace Budge Pert in Peru to explain ancient Kemet, um, far as using him for reference uh, to prove their point. Um, if anyone understands the truth about Medunetia, or what they refer to as Medunetia, if vowels didn't exist in the sense of A-E-I-O-U, how could the word be Medunetir? Are we going off what it sound out as? Because we're dealing with a Germanic translation when you listen to Wallace Budge, because a lot of the stuff that he say was not on point. He did tell the truth in the Pert in Peru or the Book of the Dead when he said that the Medunetir is an African language, and he said it belongs to African people. But... He didn't understand Medunetta completely as well, and I give him at least 40% of what he was able to decipher from a Herotic stage. No one can decipher the Merotic Medunetta that comes from what they refer to as Nubia or the demonic. When we say words like Asar, um, Haru, and all these other names, that in itself is Greco-Potomic words, because Asar couldn't have been that Neteru name or the Neter name if A-E-I-O-U didn't exist. The equivalent word would have been Wasir, W-S-R. Aset couldn't have been a de- the Neteru's name or the Inter's name because A-E-I-O-U hey, didn't exist. The actual word would have sound out as Ishit, Ishit, which, which would have been an act- actual word. Also dealing with um, Amen. You know, a lot of people like to match up Amen with the end of their prayer, saying that this deity at the end of the monotheistic Abrahamic faith, Amen, re- reflects Amen of Kemet. But that's not the actual Inter's name. The actual name is Imen or Yemen. It sounds out as human in the sense of Yemenu, if you understand true Indu Deter. The word is Inter. It's not Neter and it's not Necher, as people say. Um, I hear a lot of people that deal with 
the historical facts of Kemet and use European scholarship to decipher or say their truth based off them. The European technology is only 150 years old or close to 200 years old, and everything that he creates is not on point. You cannot match up 30,000-year-old fossils or 30,000-year-old relics or 10,000-year-old relics with technology that's only 150 or 200 years old. Everything about his technology is not on point, and most of the stuff that he created is based on theory. So do anybody really know anything about Kemet? No. Even the Egyptologists and people that go over there are just coming up with assumptions based off what they see on the walls. But they do understand the language at least 40%. But they, no one can decipher Marotic. You know, no one can decipher. And if somebody say that they, they can, they're lying. If anybody say that they can decipher Medunetia, from what we understand, they're lying. Even the word Ankh, what they refer to in Medunetia is not the actual name. That symbolized life. This is a greco potomac translation. We're dealing with a Germanic translation of these actual inters, what they refer to as Niter. Now, the people of Nigeria, where we descend from, came from three places. We understood the science of the Nook, and we also understood the period when the Roman Empire, you know, infiltrated um, Sudan, or what they referred to as Tosseti, and pushed a lot of people forward. Now, let's get to this Nook people, or the people of the Nook. It does not refer to the word Nook in the sense of a Nook. In the sense of I am, in Mdunetur, it does not refer to that. The Nuk people are a, a exchange or a, a similar lineage to the people of the Dinka people that live close to the Omo Valley at the base of the Nile and what they refer to as Ethiopia. That's where the Nuk descent from. Now, you had three types of people over there in Ghana alone, not just in Nigeria, which is the actual name, which is Oyo, but in Ghana alone, they speak 46 languages. You have the Khan people. You have all types of people in Ghana, the different types of people, the Ashanti and different families. They don't speak the same language. These people came from different parts of East Africa at different times. People left out of Ethiopia at an earlier stage and went into West Africa before the people that they refer to as Nunuk or the Intuk came down from Sudan or Taseti and migrated over there. There were already people there, and they had to establish organization and civilization together to create a new unit. When they first came there, the Igbu people, which, which is a Nubian or Marotic word that we see in certain Marotic language, we, even though they can't be decided, but certain fragments of the language does exist, Igbu. Not Igbu, what they say, I-G-B-O, but Igbu, which refers to the same people, Igbu, in the Marotic script. Even though A-E-R-U didn't exist in that sense, it sounds out as that. You know what I'm saying? Um, they matched up with these people. So us, us over here in North America, in South America, some of our DNA linked back to what they refer to as ancient Kemet, and some of our DNA linked back to a people that's older than ancient Kemet, because Kemet is not um, the first empire in, in what they refer to as Africa. It's, it's the last. And even the word El Kibalan is not, uh, or El Kibalan is not the original word for that continent. That's an Arabic word. This, that's an Arabic word. And I know a lot of people in the community are saying these things, and they don't even, they, they're going off, translations of people who got it from somewhere else, probably from a European. El Kibalan is not the El Kibalan is not the uh, it's not an African word. That's an Arabic word. And a lot of people don't like to hear that, but it's truth is truth. Um all this stuff is based off assumption. And we need to learn how to decipher it the best way we can. And I'm gonna start off reading the Exiled Egyptians, The Heart of Africa by Mustafa Gadala, who clearly states inside of this book, in the Romanian period, he says the heights of the Abyssinians who conquered the region of the Moro. They also found a totality in abandoned temples that was also regarded to the god or the that they referred to as the Petamek, which was the lion deity, which refers to the lord of royal power. A lot of people don't understand who a Petamek is. It's an ancient Marachic deity that people don't refer to. It has a lion face and eight arms, similar to the same structure patterns that they have in India or the Javinian Empire, Indus Kush. Um... Okay, so it indicates also the Roman military who forced and abandoned the land and also went further down in Aswan and Tusunt, where the Moro people also lived, and also matted them out and took their land and pushed them back. Much of the carriers of all archaeology believe and have the evidence of a strange currency and a matchup with the people that they refer to as the Marotic speaking people who went down to Yoruba land which suggests the newcomers of the area of southern Nigeria came from the Nile Valley. In the Roman era later, events and evidence will also show the people from the Marotic period made 
eventually and also connected with the Yoruba system, which has a part of the area described as the bastard states of the Hasea and also the northern parts of Nigeria. See later chapters in this book that I'll be reading right now that also explains the bastard names or the bastard means of the illegitimate states of what they refer to as Yoruba. Because even the word itself, Nigeria, is not an actual African word. That only refers to the Niger, which refers to the black water. The actual word, a branch of the people head over there was called Oya. You know what I'm saying? Um, in Nigeria, they, the archaeology also shows the descendants of the Greco and Roman origins indicating fossils that they found over there. Fossil, felix, and also relics of certain things that determines that these people migrated up and down Mesopotamia prior before they went and also matched up with the early people that descend from the eastern part of Africa, which is Ethiopia, who bridged the gap, what people refer to as the Igbo or the Igbo people. So the whole thing is, is that your DNA is just not Kemet. Your DNA that you have is much more greater than a Kemet, or what they refer to as Kemet. The Nubian people, or what they refer to as Nubian people, us in America and the people back home are a great people. You were the you have the DNA of the people that gave birth to the people that live in Kemet. Past, present, and future all exist in now. If you want to see the actual um these features of the commissions, you should check out the Beja people. You know what I'm saying? So if you're dealing with the Beja people, the Beja people are an actual photo that proves and shows who the ancient commissions are to this day. And these people migrate up and down and now from um, northern Egypt to southern Egypt to Eritrea, what they referred to as Ethiopia before it was split, um, with the Amhetic speaking people. They were um, traveling up and down Sudan or northern Sudan, Aswan, and other places. These people are still here. So you should check out the Beja people, spelled B E J A people. Um, if you looked at um, my show, at the beginning of the show, that chart that I showed you, which is the imagery of the people of Nubia or Sudan and the people of ancient Kemet, are all still there. They're all still there. But where does this come from with us? We come from the people that gave birth to Kemet, and we also are extensions of the people who left out of Kemet to create new civilizations, like they did with the Dogon Empire, the Yoruba Empire. And also if we go into the linguistics or the language, we know that Wolof, if you speak Wolof, Wolof is similar to Medunetia, or what they refer to as Medunetia. And also certain words that I have in this book that explains the origin of it, certain words you can find in Yoruba comedic netarus in a sense of if you deal with uh, medunetia the word etim but in the Greco translation of etim will be referred to as etum um, which refers to the hydrogen atom is a state of Yoruba when they say etu or when you deal with the medunetia word uh, sek or sekmet refers to the word in the Yoruba language is sek or when you deal with the word antif in the medunetia language it goes back to the state of anta um, when you deal with the word Fari or Fari in Medunetia, it goes back to the Yoruba word Fari. We know that Ra in Medunetia or ancient Medunetia refers to fire, and you can find this word Ra or fire in many African tribes. It refers to fire in a sense. You also can find the word Meri or Merir or Meri, or Meri, which means beloved or love in Medunetia, and you can also find it in Yoruba as Meri. You can also find Ba and Ra and Ba Ra and Ba Ra and Ra and Ra and Fo also in Medunetia and Yoruba, which shows that they had a deep, deep, deep connection. But um, again, it's just so much to it. It explains who and what's going on. Um, also, if you get a book written by Obinga, just not the people of Kemet, but also dealing with the people of um The Khan people, they have a deeper connection as well. If people have the Pert in Peru, if you study the um, Khan people, you can find in the Pert in Peru, it refers to give reference to uh, Khan people that dealt with uh, Medunet and the Pert in Peru or the Pert in Her. In the sense of um, you find the word Anu, which is a word that they refer to as, as, in, 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 in a Khan. You find Fonti or Fanta in the Pert in Peru, and you also find Kaminu, which refers to Kanum in the Pert Emeru, you find Tabu in Hensia and Ma'ati, and you also find Per Menu and Tutu and Ati, which is also translations because they didn't have A-E-R-O-U's, the actual word for Ta'u or Tu, this is just the way it sounds out, would have been Tio or Tio, which is the way it sounds out. You also can find the word in the Pert Emeru in the sense of Ancha, which means thing, 
and also means the same thing as the Bentu, which also refers back to the Benu, or the Benu bird, which also goes back to what they describe as um, the Celsius plate. And also you can find in certain tribes in Africa, we know that one of the greatest warrior deities that we had in Thebes was Mentu. And you can also find this word Mentu, which was the warrior god, or warrior Intewer, Enneteru, which refers to an actual Medinetia, Mte. You can also find it in so the Untu tribe, which deals with the Mentu, which means warrior as well. When you deal with the word Zulu, Zulu means the same thing as Haru or Her. The actual word for Haru would have been Hara. It means warrior. It means the same thing, a warrior tribe. The same thing with the Mendinka, which deals with the word Kamara, which means ruler of the land. You can find these words in all the languages is scattered all out. But like I said, we exist prior to a people that exist and extend older and longer than that. And what I mean by older and longer, we have to go further than ancient Kemet and go base, go down to the base of the Nile, past past the moon that they talked about and the mountain that they talked about that they came from, all the way down to Tanzania, past that to the pygmy people, you know, the best people that created the language system, that created the symbolism, that there was the first observers to look around and create the deities and imagery all over the world. These same people also left out of what we refer to as Africa and went into Asia Minor to create civilization. This is why you can find similarities in the divas, and you can also find similarities in the Netaru. You can find same scriptures in certain Netarus when it talks about um, how a tomb was alone in ancient Kemet when he created himself out of nothingness in a vacuum state. You can also find this in, in sand or what they refer to as India with the actual word was sand when it says that Brahma or the self or Akma was alone and Nara, which is that vacuum state. And also you can also find it with Obatila who self-created himself out of Ludumari, which is the absolute in Yoruba who procreated itself but got drunk off the illusion of life or the elixir of life and created the reality of the dense state, which was the first stage of matter, which is irritated energy or agitated energy, or which is a concentration of energy moving at an elusive state. You can find this. This is all the same people, the same people, yet much more greater. So I just wanted to get that out there. Also dealing with um, where do the people stand today? Now, I want y'all to look up the Beja people. You know, when you get a chance, you get off here, type up the word Beja, B-E-J-A, and you can find these are one of the earliest forms of Kemet or the descendants of what they refer to as Kemet that still exists just as well as you and every other African tribe. But all the Arabs over there that we see, I don't even like to say Arab because Arab is not a race of people, it's a language, but the mulattoes that you see, are they descendants of Kemet as well? They have the Africoid DNA inside of them. They are a, 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 a mulatto version of Greco, Romanian, Persian, Comitian, Ethiopic, even Puanti, which refers to Punt, which means Somalia. They have all that DNA inside of them. So the people that you see over there in the northern parts of Africa that looks like Arabs or whatever, or what they refer to as Arabs, are nothing but mulattoes, bastardized children that was left behind. Um, the same read the same way with the Arab people who was left behind. You know what I'm saying? So um, the Arab people that that was living in that Arabian Peninsula that were mixed breeds of mulattoes because that was a hotel for Greeks and Romans. What they referred to as Mecca, but the actual word is Becca, was a hotel for Greeks and Romans who went through their had sex with the Kresh people or the Kresh people, what they referred to as Ethiopic people that lived over there already, had sex with the women and left, and it gave birth to these mulatto people. The Arabic language, some people believe that the Arabic language is an extension of African language. And you can find some similarities in between the Herodic Medunetia and, um, and, and Arabic. Like, for example, you find the word meh, which re reference light, and it sounds out as mer, which reference light. And you can also, in Arabic, you can find the word ner, which reference light in um, Arabic. But Arabic language itself comes from a Syriac or Syrian language, which has also an admixture of a Herodic since all language comes from Africa, because all language was created by Africans. But when you get to ancient Egypt and you start dealing with heretic, not morotic, but heretic, and you start dealing with demonic Medunetia, you start dealing with a language that's starting to decrease into these new languages like um, Hebaru or Hebrew or Arabic. It starts to water down and decrease, and that goes into Latin and Roman. And the Hebrew that people say that was the African language, which it wasn't, is actually a derivative of Greek because it's Yiddish. It's not the actual Hebaru. It's all languages that derive from the Herodic Medunetia, which came from the Merotic, which came from a Tanetian or the Tanetian language from the place that we refer to as Ethiopia, 
which come from a further place before that. So Medinete is not one of the oldest civil word languages. It's one of the greatest and, and, and most potent languages that still stand out, one of the ancient languages, but it's not the first. It's just one of the great languages that people give reference to due to the record writings, the civilized structure, the patterns of how it was written out, and the fossil things that was left behind, or the patterns of what was left behind to explain it. But it's not the oldest. I hear a lot of people saying that Medunetta is the oldest language. It's not true. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, Medunetta is not the oldest language. So, we have to get back to that. And also, also, just not that, but dealing with um, the historian traits of um, what they refer to as Marotic, again, which is a language that no one really speaks, which is an extension of uh, Tanzanian language, we have to also deal, let's deal with the Salisis language, which is one of the oldest languages that people don't go back to when it comes to the Tanzanian people. This see, this is the thing, man. Like our people are so old, there is really no reference point to where and who we come from. You know what I'm saying? We know that we come from out of Africa, but the people are so old, there is really no pinpoint of where and who and what. But the, my goal is today is to teach people that Kemet is not the first civilization of Africa. We had greater extensions beyond that, and also. I'm also trying to let people know what happened to the ancient Egyptians and where are they today. And we see them now, and we see them with the Belgian people and the people that are still floating around. Okay, back to the history. Okay, now we're going to deal with the priesthood of ancient, the Yoruba people, and we're going to deal with the priesthood of ancient Kemet. Okay, we're dealing with the same book, what happened to ancient Egypt, and after the pharaohs, what, is, what happened. This book is written by Mustafa Gadala, which is one of my favorite authors. Some things he says on point, you find truth and falsehood in all things. But majority of it, this, this dude was born in Kemet, or what they refer to as Egypt. So he has some things that's on point, and some things you'll find that's a little iffy. And just not that, I got somebody that's even better that can back him in this, which is Dr. Obinga, which was a student of Dr. Ante Job, which you refer to as Diop, but his actual name is Job. You know what I'm saying? If, you want, if we deal with language, his name was Dr. Job, or Dr. Ante Job, what we refer to as Diop. So here it is right here. It says in this book, men and masons are the embalmers and the keepers and the animals of all things and customs, the same thing as the ancient Egyptians, and you can find this in Yoruba. Like the Egyptians, the priests of Yoruba temples are divided into grades, which it is. You have different Orishas, that's your godhead, that they refer to as your godhead, which also symbolizes the different stages of the Enterus, which is the different fragments of your godhead. For example, it says that in the Yoruba ancient Egypt, the offerings and also the heredity of also things that was given to the net to rules only stimulates the essence or incestes of all things that's all around. These essences are also the formulas that accumulate the transaction of the transcendental state of elements or particles. The Orisha, or the house of the God, which well, Orisha is what it means. In ancient Egypt, also the temple are called the house of Niter, which is the pyramid. The actual word for pyramid is not pyramid, that's Greek. The actual word is per inter, or per inter, which means house of the divine or house of nature. Okay, women in ancient Egypt attained the position and the priestess and also also hold the position of, of the founding nations of all the aviculture, iron and copper and all other things. Judges of the high rank serve the ma'at and the priestess and also the chief of justice. You can also find these things with the Ori system in Yoruba. Specialized doctors in different alignments and also the sources and refers to the ancient Egyptians and the ethnic culture. Okay, that's 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 cool. Now that's cool. But to back that doesn't even go further, let's go way further back to the people of Ethiopia that was dealing with this science way before ancient Kemet because the ancient Egyptians got it from somewhere. And who the ancient Egyptians learned how to deal with nature and how to learn to observe first from were the people of what they referred to as Nubia, Ta Seti, which means land of the bow. They dealt with this first. And the people of Taseti learned this science from Taniter, which means land of nature, land of the divine. Ta means land, and Ter means nature or the divine, which refers to what they refer to as Ethiopia or Abyssinia or all the other artificial lands that they give us. I mean, the Nubian people or the, or the black people are so old, there is no direct name for us. We're so old. You know, Africa ain't the name. al Kibalon ain't the name. And no one's really speaking better than that, too. I mean, Wallace Budge only had 33% of it, 45% of it, like I said earlier. Dude didn't understand that shit. A lot of people don't understand it. What we see in ancient Kemet today is skeletons. The Sphinx itself 
is older than what they say. When they looked at the plates, the plate residue goes back. The archaeologists can say it goes back 30,000 years. But due to their technology being only 150 years old or 200 years old, it's even older than that. They really don't know. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the truth of everything. No one really knows. All we can do is do the best we can and look at the walls and see that those were Nubian people or um, Moorish or dark complected people. Not more in the sense of what the um, Moorish Science Temple teaches, but Moorish in the sense of dark skin, dark hue, dark complected people. That's what they were in ancient uh, on those walls when we look at those glyphs or what they refer to as hieroglyphs. Okay. Now I'm also dealing with other tribes, just not Kemet. I'm going to also get into, I talked about the Banu earlier. I'm going to also talk about different tribes, like the Nayama, which also deals with a lot of things that is custom to ancient Kemet, which also deals with things that's accustomed to ancient Ethiopia, where they got the science from. I got to keep repeating that. Okay. Now, I'm on page 220. If anybody got the book. It's the division and labor and the classes of also the, in classes of ancient Kemet. Now, right here it says that ancient Kemet, like most of African societies, did not have caste systems, which they didn't. And the strictest point in the sense, the word, but also the structure patterns of ancient Kemet, they only had grades and degrees of a house. But there was also a general division of labor into five main groups. Now, we're dealing with the consistent and the clarity of all shrines and judges and also the doctors from the schools of Imhotep which means come in peace. You know, the farming in the community consisted of royal engagements, um, stock trade, um, they dealt with beer, they had gardens, supervisors, and also waterway activities. It's also dealing with the, du the duties of such um, irrigation systems back home. Now, you can also see these same things with the Nyama tribe dealing with the same structures. I mean, the same thing that you see here, you can find the Sebahu, which means the uh, not just Sabahu in a sense, because in, and for some reason the metal net said one word can mean five things based off what they give us, because we really don't know. This is just an assumption. Um, then the Amal refers to their passion of Nintia, which goes back to the same word as Inter, which means nature or divine. But Inter really doesn't even mean nature. I hear a lot of people saying that Inter means nature. See, when you try to match up Medunetia or an African language to something that's similar to Latin or European, nature or nature, which descent from the word nature, which is a Latin word. Nature don't mean no nature. This is just an assumption again. And terror, if you've ever seen a depiction of it, the depiction of it was an axe, not a flag. It's an axe, which means mighty. It also means force or something greater, superior, which refers to its energy, power, greatness, divine. Divinity, nature is just one lower aspect of what it is. You know, people try to match up words, the European word, and they're trying to stick with him on his on his word path. I, I don't know who these people are working for, but um, it's crazy. It's all about coming into your own and realizing self. Okay, we have these five main groups in ancient Kemet. You had um, not just ancient Kemet, but with this particular tribe. Okay. The dynamics between the coast ships of ancient Kemet and this tribe of the Nyami, all groups rely on the same force, which is energy, like I said. Also arising also the problems that deals with the patterns. When you're dealing with stuff like voodoo or voodoo, what they refer to the cosmos or the body of Nter, which means force or what people refer to as God, you're dealing with energy patterns. That's all the Neterus or the Rishas or the Diva really are. They're just energy patterns, which explains the energy ripples, the way things move, the patterns and events of energy. Also, I want to get to the original 42 precepts of Ma'at. I see it in different books. People got all these different interpretations. But I'm going back to Dr. Anti Jope, who people refer to as Diop, but his name was Jope. And I'm going to go back to Dr. Obinga, African philosophy, and get it from them, who's dealing with the real Medonetia, or what they refer to as Medonetia, the actual 42 precepts of Ma'at. Ma'at actually has seven principles in ancient Kemet. People don't talk about it. And those seven precepts we know, love, justice, equality, equilibrium, reciprocity, and peace. But I want to get to the original states of the 42 precepts. A lot of people believe the ancient the people of Kemet did not deal with animal sacrifice. And in the early in the early state when they first created these 42 laws based off the Tamahu, or what they refer to as Am, which refers to the Asiatic that invaded, they had to create these laws. And the laws were like this. And the actual writings. Okay. 
It's I have not mistreated people. I have not committed no crimes in, place, in the place of truth. I have not known what was forbidden to the land. I have done no evil. I have not begun. I have not denied my offerings to the gods or by giving them meat. The netzers depend on them. I have not done what was inalable to any netzeru. I have not called uh, any weeping. I have not I have not murdered. They didn't say I have not killed. I have not murdered. Killing and murdering is two different things. I have not blasphemed against any primordial deities, which refers to the Agdog, which is the primordial energy. We know the primordial energy when they refer to primordial energy. Primordial energy is the vacuum energy. When we talk about dark energy, dark matter, the darkness and an infinity, which is Nun Nunet, Huan Huhet, Kuan Kuket, and Amun and Amanet, which represents or symbolizes the void, that primordial state that gave birth to our radiant energy. Also, the Yoruba talks about this as well, and the Yoruba explains this as Alutamari. The Zulu talk about it as Akulukulu, which represents the vacuum state of the vacuum energy. And the Dogon refers to it as Ama or Amar, which is also symbolic to the same thing as Amen. You know. So also, that's actually the actual writings of Medunet. Okay. Let's deal with the timeline of ancient Kemet. Um, we have all, I mean, there's so much in this. I usually just freestyle that I'm going from page to page off what I study because I think that a lot of us need to know who is and what is ancient Kemet. You know, because, I, I mean, my thing is I don't stay in Kemet all day. You know, we need to talk about greater empires that we had in Africa. You know, the Oyo empires and different places. But I want to also explain what happened to the people of Kemet. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm going to go to the Memphite theology in African philosophy, the Pharaonic period, which explains the process of Ptah. And I'm going to go into the Daguerrean aspect of what happened when they deal with the deity, with the Wolof people, when they deal with the same structure of Ptah, which shows the relation in between. Um... It says that right here, Ptah created all the Neterus and all humans and all crawling things and creatures that lives in all creations and shares the essence of Ptah. Thus, Ptah was pleased. Now, the essence of Ptah is mass. That is, the stuff that we have around us that makes up the material and mechanical reality. Pa means the, Ta means earth, and Medinetia, which means material or mechanical substance. Right here, you can find the same thing with Welof, which refers to Ptim. Patim created animals, plants, and humans, and everything else that lives and thinks. And also, it goes through the same things. Amel is pleased. Or Patim is pleased. This is what it says with the role of people that's dealing with their deity. Also, with the Amma, who created the Nomos, with the Dogon people that deals with the Nomos, which only symbolizes not nothing extraterrestrial, but the spinal fluid of your back, your reptilian state, which is the elliptic stem cell. It says that um, Amma created Nomos, and he did well. And the water from the sky fell, and the earth, and he did well, and it is also fulfilled. Then you turn around and find the same thing for Amen, as Amun or Amen created Ra, and as the water in the sky fell, everything was good. So basically, these people were dealing with the same thing. It's all the same thing, different garment. All the principles are the same. There is no differences in between any tribe in ancient Africa. All of it's one and the same. There is nothing really different. It's just that a lot of our people don't understand how and, and how and what and how, you know, significant we really are. You know, they got us in a spell like, you know, everything is everything is what it what what it is from what they offer us, but we can't go by everything that they offer us. You know, Wallace Budge, who people a lot of people read from, a lot of that stuff is not on point. A lot of these Europeans are not dealing with real ancient Egyptians. These people are kidnapping our ancestors and putting them inside of penitentiaries or prisons, which is museums, kidnapping them out of their graves. A lot of the stuff that they have, man, it's not, it's not, it's it's, it's just BS. The whole goal and the whole thing that we need to be doing is trying to establish something to overthrow what's being played. Those Arabs over there, those mulattoes that they refer to as Arabs are not, they don't give a damn about the, the ancient Kemet. They don't give a damn about what's going over there. They just built two cities. They were talking about two years ago knocking down those penetras that we refer to as pyramids or energy centers. We have to link back, man, and we have to get together. And the goal is not to stay in ancient Kemet. We have to create something new. We have to create something new. That's what it's all about. And also, we, I mean, the Do, I mean, we know about the Dogon tribe. We know about all that. We know that they were descendants of ancient Kemet. But my whole goal is we have to create something new right now. 
Now is where it's at. We can't get caught up in all that. You know what I'm saying? We have to create a new program and a new setting now, and we should learn a, a, learn to create a new language. You know, if Dr. Malachi York can create the beautiful, the Nuwapian language, we can create a whole new language for ourselves. You know, it's not hard. We need to create something new with the people that want to do it because my thing is, and what I'm seeing now, is that everybody our color is not our kind. And you can also see the confusion that exists in ancient Africa, what they refer to as Africa before the European even came. We had divisions then. A lot of people left out because land was crowded. A lot of people left out because they had different ideas. And due to those different ideas, they created different settings and different patterns for themselves by creating different tribes or what they refer to as tribes or clans. So we can do the same thing. We have to create something new for our people, a whole new program and a whole new setting for ourselves. That's what the people did in Kemet when they left out of what they referred to as Nubia. They left out, created their civilization, and created bigger pyramids of Pernetas, even bigger than the ones that was in Nubia, and created their own thing. You know what I'm saying? And kept tabs on all the resources. To the people that want to get together to create something new, we can do it. And that's just what it is. We need to create a new program, a new setting. And we need to build on something, man, for the, for those that want to do this. You know, it's a lot of zombies out here and a lot of distractions out here who don't like change. Change is something needed. I mean, in Medinetia, the commission said, or the people that they refer to as the commission said, that Nebuchadnezzar is universe, or what they refer to as Pantia in Medinetia. So the Lord of the universe is change. We have to understand that. We have to learn to accept and appreciate change. Change is very needed. And a lot of us a lot of us that's stuck in our egotistic ways that don't want to let go are naturally self destructive to ourselves because we, we desire to stay in these boxes. We want to battle over all we Moors. We want to battle over all we Hebrews. We want to battle over all this crap that was given to you, some slop, some shit that was given to you that's not even real interpretations. Hebrew is not a real interpretation. Hebrew is a language, it's not a race of people. You know, Arabic is not a race of people, that's a language, you know. All this stuff, man, we got to just let it go and create something new. I mean, all this stuff that these people are offering us in this quote-unquote unconscious community is a distraction for us because creating something new now. You know, we have to focus on the now. You know, is the black woman God? It ain't no motherfucking God. You know, God is a European word. It's a Germanic word, which means to invoke. All that exists is consciousness and awareness. So this whole show today was just explaining, and I don't want to stick on it all day because there's only so much you can talk about about ancient Egypt. We know who the ancient commissions was. It's a played out thing. People know who they were. We know that the people in West Africa and the people here are descendants of these people. And we also understand that these people of ancient Kemet were not the first empire in Africa. It was one of the last empires in Africa. And we have to just get back into creating. That's one thing that, this, that, that the system did to us. They stopped our creativity. And when we learn to create for ourselves, and when we learn to do for ourselves, they pro they profit off of it. So the people that's thinking, they don't want to think for themselves. They think for him to keep his system alive. So we have to learn to think for ourselves. Africans, or what we refer to as Africans, were the first people to invent thinking. We invented thinking way before anybody else invented it. We invented it. No one invented thinking but us. You know, you see the little Greco-European, his little statue with him folded up with his arms, and he's thinking. But that, that's just a symbol of how he was trying to figure out how to destroy the world. I mean, we make up the planet. You know, in America alone, it's 60 to 40 million Africans in America, not including our black Latino people that's in the Afro-Cubans and Afro-Puerto Ricans and our people in the West Indies. You know, ain't no way in hell, man. We should be creating a whole new nation. You know what I'm saying? We should be building on this. The Kemet thing is cool, but what we see now in everybody is skeletons. Those pyramids, it's over with. The situation that you are in now is who you are. You cannot talk about Ra. You cannot talk about Ptah. You cannot talk about any Neteru or any Arisha if you don't control the resources. If you don't control the resources, the gods represents the elements, which represents the forces, which represents, represents Ptah. Ptah was the first deity that they dealt with in Memphite theology, which represents the earth. Pa, the, ta, earth, which represents the resources. If you're not dealing with any resources, and you're not dealing with anything as far as the elements, and you can't control the elements around you, you're not dealing with anything. You know what I'm saying? These people all over Africa, and even in, even in Afro-Asia before it was called Asia, because that's a Chaldean word. That's a Chaldean word, which means the East, and in Sanskrit it means the dawn. But prior before that, the whole goal was man knows thyself. You cannot know yourself or realize yourself if you can't move around the way you want to, and you can't do nothing the way you want to. You know, back then, we didn't have to have license to travel the seas to go all over the world. Dealing with the Tuamakan tribe, what they refer to as the Omex, when we created civilization over here. Or when they found Luxor, 
Lusri, dealing with the um, oldest Brazilian fossils that goes back to us. We can't go. We, we, we have to create something new, man. It's time to just let it go. You know what I'm saying? The egos, the debating, and all this other crap, it's time to let it go. And if anybody, you know, which I see a lot of people don't like when Ngozi talk, but my whole goal is I'm not trying to budget off this. I'm not trying to get paid off this. I want everybody in this room and everybody that don't agree or disagree to think for yourselves. No one's going to save you. No one's better than you. I'm not better than you. You're not better than me. You're the most important thing on the universe. And we have to realize that. We have to learn the science of individuality. We have to learn the science of thinking. We have to learn the science of how to deal with our cortex because human beings have the biggest cortex. That's what we need to deal with. We can't be dealing with... I know this and you know this and I and and, and 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 I'm more important because no one's more important. All I see is egos, egos clashing, egos clashing. And when you have people like me to try to teach people to think for themselves, they don't like that. They don't like that. They don't want me they don't want people to teach y'all to think for y'all self. They want to keep y'all in boxes. All this debating, all this listening to people talk about the same shit over and over again is irrelevant. You know, I can't be on blog talk all day talking about this shit. This is this is this is a, this is not this is not nothing that I live for. I just live to teach people, and I want people to learn the science. And after that, you go on and do what you got to do with it to make yourself a dynamic person. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is this is this is just a hobby, man. And I like doing this. I'm not trying to trying to create an institute. I'm not trying to create a spiritual society. I'm trying to create people that want to do something, build up a new society, a new nation of people. You know, we got to let these languages go. This, this poor English language, even though I speak this bastard language and every time I talk, I'm cursing everybody and everybody cursing me when they talk back to me. We have to create a new language because his words and the words that we use is putting us in deeper and deeper spells, you know. So 